Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and all that stuff. Hope you're having an awesome day wherever you are. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about three editing tips that will help you produce, uh, quickly produce beautiful HDR photos. And so I'm gonna jump into the photo here and it's this one. And this is the three exposure brackets. That's the dark one and the medium one and the light one. And that's my final result, uh, all done in Aurora HDR. So let's jump into Aurora and talk about that a little bit. So. The first thing is, um, the first tip, if you will, is to begin with the end in mind. And so you may do that already with your photos, and I try to do it. Now, admittedly, I don't always uh, begin with the end in mind. Sometimes I don't actually know what I wanna do to the photo until I get in there and start messing around. But if you can, you know, when you start looking at your bracket set, so for example, if you keep your photos in Lightroom, uh, as I do, uh, before I stick them over here in Aurora and start making my HDR, I look at it and say, well, what do I wanna do? And in this photo, what I wanna do is accentuate the sunset. It was a sunset. You can see the sun's out of frame to the right. Uh, and it was kind of warm, but this is the base HDR. There's, uh, there's the center exposure from the bracket set. The base HDR looks pretty good in terms of the light and all that, but it's not very warm. And so what I wanna do is accentuate the sunset. So I began with that end in mind uh, before I started slapping filters on it. Um, and so that's tip number one. Now tip number two is use presets. And uh, I'm a fan of presets and I've got my own presets I make and sell. And you know, there's other presets available on the web. I'm sure Trey has them or Serge or other people. Um, and make your own presets, do whatever you want. But I think presets are actually a great starting point because they give you the uh, idea of what you're looking for. They're a great way to sort of cycle through different ideas. Um, in case you don't have the end in mind, it gives you the ability to go figure out what end result you might want. So I'm in my um, Road Tripper preset pack here, and there's you know a couple that look pretty good here, like this one in all of the beauty. I click on that. I'm like, that looks pretty good. Um, there's one over here that looks pretty good. Nope, not, not that one. Uh, let's see, over here. Uh, this one looks pretty good. The mountains are calling, right? Um, I've got another preset pack that I made with Aurora 17, it works in Aurora 18, but that's called Bella Italia. There's a few presets here, and notice I'm not going into all of them, and that's because the end in mind is accentuating the sunset, so I'm looking for presets that are gonna help me make that light really pop. Uh, and so I'm just kinda clicking through some of those. Now, um, I'm gonna go back to my Road Tripper pack, and I'm gonna get this one that I liked in awe of the beauty, because this helps me ex um, sort of explain Tip number three, and tip number three for me is keep in mind the difference between the subject and the mood. Um, and so what I wanna do is I wanna separate those things because applying this preset, for example, it stuck the mood on the subject. And what I mean by that is the mood is the sunset and the golden light that I wanna accentuate. The subject is the castle and the walkway. But if you look at the castle and the walkway, They've taken on this unnatural kind of um, overly orange yellow look from the preset, right? So if I turn off the preset, uh, let's see here. Yeah, that, that, you know, let me just do this, right? Um, they've taken on that color and that look, and I don't necessarily think it works that well. And truthfully, if the sun is out of frame to the right, it's unlikely to be casting an orange sunset glow on the front of the castle. It, it would hit the the wood here, but it's unlikely to really hit the front of the castle. And so keep in mind that you wanna um, separate the idea of the mood you're creating from the subject. Now that doesn't mean they can't have similar looks, I'm just saying keep that in mind. And the other thing, the component of that is separating those. Um, I wanna soften up the sky and I would rather add some detail to the castle to further separate the subject from the mood. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my Aurora file that I saved with all my edits and walk through those steps as I use them on that photo. One second. Okay, so here I am with my base HDR photo. There's the center exposure from the bracket set. There's the blended HDR. Came out pretty well. I like the distribution of light, which is one of the things I love about HDR is balancing that light out. Um, this is three exposures, negative four, negative two, and zero shot at F22, ISO 100, 24 millimeters, all that stuff. So what did I do? Well, 
this is where I start out and I said, all right, what's the mood, um, you know, keeping the end in mind, right, when I began. So I said, well, the mood that I'm gonna create is sunset. So I went into HDR Basic, and as you can see, I did some temperature and tint adjustments, a little contrast, things like that. And then I went straight into color, and I popped that a little bit with some enhancements. And now, you can see I'm starting to get too yellow in the castle and the foreground. I think the sky looks pretty okay, the water looks not bad. Uh, but the, you know, the castle and the boardwalk piece are just kind of getting out of there. So that's what I'm talking about. You got to remember the difference between the mood that you're creating and the subject and, and how well do they blend together. Um, I added a little bit of image radiance, which I think softened it up. A little polarizer, which is going to be very subtle. It's mostly about enhancing the blue up there in the sky. Um, and then I went into top and bottom tuning. So here, um, I just took the, that was a big change, by the way. Did you notice that? So there's the before. And there's the after. I'm starting to correct some of that over uh, overdoneness. I don't know. I don't know what you call it um, around the, the light and the color of the sunset. So in the top, I brought the exposure down, brought up the vibrance, reduced the warmth to cool it off a little bit, and then uh, whoops, I didn't mean to turn that off. I meant to click on bottom. I did uh, down here. I brightened it a little bit, added a little contrast, and I took down the vibrance and the warmth as well. So again. Top and bottom tuning before and after. Big difference in the photo. And now I'm looking at it and saying, I'm kind of getting where I want to get with this photo. Uh, and then I stuck a little vignette on it. And that was mostly about brightening the center, if you look at that. Uh, inner brightness. Um, I'm, this is actually a, a trick. You can't use inner brightness unless you at least move the amount slider to one. So I moved it to one because I didn't want to add a vignette at this point. That might be something I do at the very end. I never add a vignette if I've got multiple layers and, and stuff to go. So um, I moved that to one and then I brighten the center of the photo. So that's really all that is before and after. Because again, I'm focused on the subject and that's helping me create that separation I talked about. So then this is the layer about creating that separation. So um, if you look at this layer, let me show you with the brush mask. This layer, uh, all the edits that I do um, here in a moment are gonna apply just to the castle and the boardwalk. So this was creating that separation between those two that I've already talked about. So again, HDR basic, made some adjustments there, sort of toning down some of that brighter color um, with the color filter. I then just bumped up vibrance a little bit. And HDR structure, I just increased that because I wanted to give it a little bit of pop um, I like things like this. I mean, an old castle and an old boardwalk, you kind of want that to crunch a little bit. So that's where the structure comes in. Uh, and then HSL, that was, uh, let's open this. I don't remember what I did here. Let me see, hue, yeah. Okay, so I changed the orange and yellow hue a little bit. And that was, if you look at, look at the castle and the boardwalk, because that's what's being impacted. I don't know how well you can tell in the video. Um, to me, I'm taking away some of that greenish yellow tint that's in there. I don't think I did anything with luminance, nope, and saturation. So it was all about hue in the orange and the yellow, kind of getting more into kind of the, the yellowy orange color and away from kind of what's more the greenish tint because I don't want a green castle. It wasn't really green, but it was a little bit green. So at this point, I think um, I'm liking what, I, uh, what I've got, right? I'm, I'm keeping the end in mind, which is a nice sunset, which is uh, tip number one. I'm keeping tip number three in mind, which is how do I separate the two? Um, uh, you know, the mood from the, uh, the subject. Uh, tip two is using presets. And so that's where I come in on this next layer and actually just grabbed one of my presets and I was stuck it on the sky. Uh, let me show you the, the brush here, or excuse me, the mask, all right? It's effectively an inverse of that other mask. And in fact, that's exactly what I did. Uh, so what you can do is if you're on this layer one, you can go down here and you can click to copy the mask. And then when you get to layer two, you can paste mask. And then I applied a preset to that pasted mask because I like the look of the preset in the sky and the water, but I didn't want to mess up everything I'd already done in the castle and the boardwalk. So that copy and paste of the mask and then inverting it allowed me to do that. So as you can see, this preset, and I'll just turn all these on. I don't want to waste your time by going through all of them in detail, but basically, uh, let me close that. I think, yeah, color toning came into play. And here's where I did add a little bit of a vignette. So let me just turn off this layer. And if you're looking at it, it's gonna be just the sky and the water. Remember, that's all that we're masking on this layer and the after. So it was just adding a little bit, I don't know why I always clench my fist, I'm like a little bit. Uh, it's just a little bit of sunset pop. So again, before 
and after. The other thing I did is I reduced the opacity of this layer to 70% instead of 100. Because at 100, I think it was getting a little too, like, hey, I'm, I'm a little hyper on the sunset colors, Jim. So, you know, I went to 70, and that's something I like to keep in mind as well with presets, especially if I've already done edits, which I did down here on the base layer. Um, if I'm adding a preset later, usually my presets have a bit of color pop because it's something I love. And uh, I might tone them down via that um, opacity slider. So that's what I did there. Uh, at this point, I really like what I have. And in fact, I'm almost done with a photo, but there's a few things I don't like, which is like this big spot here, uh, these ducks and a couple of spots. And so I just popped over to Luminar. Let me turn that on. And you can see, I just removed those things with the brush, uh, the eraser brush in Luminar. You know, you can just go to plugins and Luminar and it'll take you over there. I'm not gonna spend your time um, watching me do that. I think you already know how that works. It comes back as its own Luminar layer and those things have been removed and now I'm like, all right, I'm done except for one thing and that is I just wanna go add a little denoise and that's what I did. I just brushed in denoise to the sky. So here we go, brush and there we go. Kind of a rough job. The truth is it's not really noisy. I do it a lot of times just because I really like to smooth up clouds and things like that. I just like that look. So it's just a personal preference. It wasn't particularly noisy. So. There's the before. Well, that would technically be the center exposure from the bracket set. And there's the after, the finished product. Keeping in mind three things, right? The first one, come on, you remember. Uh, the first one is beginning with the end in mind. I, I looked at these photos when I was looking at my brackets and said, what do I want to do? Well, it was a sunset. It's a castle. I want to bring that sunset feeling to life. So that was the end that I had in mind. So when I got to Aurora, I already had a goal, right? Um, second thing was... Um, you know, use presets. And I used a preset on one of my adjustment layers to accentuate those sunset colors. But I, because of a mask, I only applied it in the sky and in the water. So that worked really well for me. And the third thing is to keep in mind the idea of the mood uh, and separate that uh, in terms of your processing uh, and editing uh, from your subject matter. It, depending on what your subject is and what the mood is you're creating, it actually may make sense for them to be completely the same, that's okay. In this case of a sunset where the sun is kind of behind the castle and out of frame, I didn't want to overdo the sunset look on the front of the castle because um, the sun wouldn't be hitting it. The sun is probably hitting the back side of the castle quite well, but I was on the front side because I wanted this, this um, walkway or boardwalk across the, uh, the water. So keep those things in mind. I think those are, those are things I try to do. You know, begin with the end in mind. Use presets. Um, you, you can do sparingly if you need to or selectively with brush masking uh, or layer masking. Um, and then also keeping the idea of your the overall mood and the subject separate. And in fact, doing the structure and stuff on this castle and on the boardwalk and nowhere else and then denoising the sky is also a way to help separate the subject from the rest of the photo, which uh, you know contains a lot of the mood. So those are things I think about. I hope that it's helpful. And um, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you think about it. I'll be back really soon with more videos. I'm having fun doing this stuff. There's a lot coming. And uh, that's it, my friends. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll be back soon. Take care. Thanks for watching and adios.